So welcome to the first SPSS video clip uh, from the Department of Sociology and today we're going to talk a little bit about SPSS just giving you a basic overview of the program. Uh, the program is actually not very difficult but students sometimes have a hard time just because it seems more difficult than it is. And today we're just going to show you some basics in terms of just opening and closing the program, um, showing you the different views of the program, the different windows, uh, and then we're going to show you actually how to input your own data into SPSS and kind of run your own uh, analysis uh, on some things that you find interesting, uh, giving those numbers some variables and names and labels, and then showing you how to run frequency tables. Okay, so we can actually open up SPSS in a variety of different ways. One way is to actually go to the Start menu and look for SPSS in the menu bar. And there it is, and we can just click on it. And if we open it up this way, uh, it's going to give us kind of a blank document. Um, so just like you are going to, if you're going to open up MS Word, uh, you can open it up from the menu bar, and it'll give you a blank document. Another way to do it, actually, is also just to go to the type of documents that SPSS has. And in this class, you'll be using this data set called GSS 2006. And we'll talk more about that later. But you'll notice that the type of document is called .sav which just basically says it's an SPSS document. And you can start up SPSS just by double clicking on this. Um, but we're actually going to start just for this first video just to show you what a blank document looks like. So we're just going to click on the shortcut of SPSS. Okay, and so the window comes up. All right, so the first thing that comes up is this what would would you like to do window and you have a couple of different op options here. Uh, the first one it gives you is if you want to run a tutorial. Uh, it's a helpful thing to do but it's actually quite long uh, but if you want to do it you can just click on that. Another thing you can do is just to click um, type in the data uh, where you can just input your own data. Um, another thing you can do is open up an existing data source uh, where you would locate uh, a data file and you could just upload it from this window. But we're going to go ahead and click on type in this data. So uh, this error message might actually come up um, which is just saying that the university hasn't paid its license fee yet so um, the license is about to be expired but you don't have to worry about that right now so just click OK. And uh, you'll see kind of this uh, Excel looking like matrix um, SPSS actually has three types of windows um, there, or views actually uh, and this is called the data view and you can tell about what view you're actually watching right now by at the bottom left of the screen you'll see it's clicked on data view and if you click on variable view you'll see another window but let's click back on data view if you've ever used Excel, Excel before this might look kind of familiar it's just um, a matrix where you can enter in different variables uh, for different respondents. Uh, variables go um, vertical and the respondents go horizontal. Um, so let's add in some variables. Let's say for instance we're interested in looking at uh, SAT scores and we sample the class and we see how well people did on their uh, math SAT scores and we find out that Mary she did kind of uh, poorly and she got a 400 or and we can just type in 400 and then we'll see and she's respondent number one and for a variable she got 400 and say let's we sample another person and we look at Tom and Tom did pretty well and he got a 600 so we just type in 600 there and let's say we sample somebody else and they have uh, 590 uh, and then somebody else uh, gets a score of 570 and then somebody else gets a score of 400 or 300 didn't do too hot there let's say um, uh, we're interested now in looking at if these scores are related to how much people like statistics uh, and let's say we talk to Mary again who didn't do very well and we ask Mary the question one through five uh, how much do you love statistics? A scaling question. And she says, I don't like statistics very much. So she says, it's a two. And now we see that for respondent number one, um, 
her SAT scores is 400 and her score on this question about how much she likes math is a 2. Let's look at the next respondent. We asked this person if they like math or statistics and they say, uh, yeah, I like math. Uh, I'll give it a 4. So we enter that 4 in there. And we ask this next person and let's say they give it 5. They, they, love, <laughs> they love math. And we ask this person, uh, and they hate math. They hate statistics. They think this is a stupid survey, and uh, they give it a one. And this person who got a 300, they definitely don't like it. But you know, they're kind of neutral on this topic. Um, so we have two variables. We have respondents, and corresponding to how they answered that survey, and we have uh, questions. Um, I'm sorry, uh, SAT scores. So uh, this is kind of like Excel, uh, nothing too fancy at this point. Um, but let's say we want to find out more about these variables and that's what the variable view is for. Uh, it can actually tell you a little bit more about what these variables mean. So you see the SPSS has already created a name for our SAT variable. Let's say, let's rename that. We just simply click on it and we type in SAT S math. Now one of the things you'll notice um, for the name of the variable, SPSS doesn't like it when you have spaces in between. So if you have a space and you call it SAT math, it's going to give you an error message oh, and not allow you to do that. So let's retype in um, a name for this, we'll call it SAT math, and it should be okay with that. And then we have the type of data, and we, it's numeric, so we don't have to worry about that width and decimals, we don't need to worry about that as well at this point, um, but label. This will be the actual label of what the um, the question was. So we can actually type in a question and say um, respondents uh, SAT score. And we could go ahead and make that label a little bit larger by extending it. And um, now we can go to the next variable. And uh, here was uh, like math. So let's call, let's call it that. Like math. No spaces again. Uh, the type of data is numeric, width and decimal, not important at this point. And we'll just type in a label. And we'll call it um, how much do you like math? That's not a very well worded question. <laughs> but it will be due for right now. And uh, now let's look at values actually. Um, for SAT, the score is from 1 through 800. So it doesn't really matter what we call these values. But these, the second question, the like math, I asked them a question from 1 through 5. So we should define what 1 actually means. And to do that, we just simply click on values and this small menu pops up. And we actually type in uh, the value. So for 1, Let's say that it means they hate math. And then you type that in, you click the add button, and you see now that that one equals hate math. Uh, and now let's add two. What does two mean? Let's say um, kind of hates math. And we click add, and you have kind of hates math. And let's do three. It's kind of a neutral, but let's just say it's okay. Click on add. And then let's do four. Uh, kind of like it. Click add again, and then we put five loves math. Put some exclamation marks maybe. Now I just click add. Alright, so we just now we have our variables defined. Uh, the last thing we gotta do is uh, if we had made a mistake, let's say for instance we had uh, five is just really loves math instead of loves math, we can just click on remove and it takes that out. Um, and we can type in really loves math. And we click OK Add. And it's important to always click Add because if you don't, um, it doesn't actually change anything. And then when you kind of are happy with your scale, you just press OK. Um, 
the next menu there it says missing and uh, we'll cover missing values in the next couple of videos it's kind of an important issue but right now we'll just kind of ignore that right now uh, columns aligned not really important stuff the other important thing maybe for right now is the measures uh, what kind of data is this how is it measured uh, our SR SAT scores is 1 through 800 and it's a scaling question because the intervals uh, between 1 and 100 and 100 and 200 are, means the exact same thing. Uh, but for an SAT question about how much do you like, I'm sorry, the how much you like math is not really a scaling question because the difference between 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 might actually be different. So we'll talk more about that later, but this is called an ordinal uh, type of data set. Um, so now you have this variable view and it tells you a little bit about what the data actually is. and um, the values of the different numbers. Now if we click on the data view, we have our SAT math and we have our like math. It's changed and you've noticed that the values have actually changed as well. Um, so instead of fours and fives, there's kind of hates and kind of likes. And if you see on the top of the screen, one of the shortcuts is to allow you to actually see what the values are. And clicking it and on and off gives you the numbers or what it means. So so far this is kind of a fancy Excel um, software but there's actually a lot of different things you can do with SPSS and the real engine of the software really is in these top menus um, all the different statistical analysis that you can do besides just labeling things um, one of those things is to run a descriptive uh, analysis so let's say we're just interested to see um, in our class uh, how many people actually hate or love math and we could do that by clicking on frequencies and this sub menu comes up uh, on the left side you'll see the different variables that we have little cartoon figures tells you that one is ordinal and the other one is a scale and to actually do a frequency on the variable we just move it over um, we can move it right back by just clicking that little arrow in the middle but let's do a like math click on there and all you gotta do is click OK Okay, and then another window po pops up, and this is the output document. Basically, all the analysis that you run is generated in a second, a secondary document called your output document. And here we have a frequency table to tell you uh, the different how it, how you, the class breaks down in terms of this question. So we have the variables on the left side, uh, and it sa says hate math, kind of hates math, it's okay, kind of like it, and real loves it. Uh, and it tells you the next thing over is the frequency, how often that actually happened in your sample. So each each score got one person, and then it tells you the percentage, uh, valid percentage and percentage. And we'll talk about that in the next couple of videos. Um, and it also gives you the cumulative percentage. So we'll talk more about frequencies uh, when we do a little bit more uh, intense analyses. But for right now, let's just go ahead and close this. Um, it's asking if I want to save the content of the output and you can save um, the output into your flash drive if you have one um, but this isn't very important to me so I'm just going to click on no it's going to close it and it gives me back here and uh, you're you're actually not going to save most of the data that you're going to be generating in this class because you're going to be actually using another data file we're not really going to be using our own data file so we're not going to save this one as well uh, so we're just going to quit um, but if you wanted to you could save on um, the menu and you can just click on save and it would ask you for a directory about where you could save it but um, I'm going to go ahead and close this because like I said we're not going to be generating a lot of our own data so clicking on close uh, closing the last data editor will exit do you want to proceed yes save changes to the following data set nope 